Well, what, uh, where did that come from? Well, Such hopefully, um, being humbled a little bit, um, you know, being a little more coachable, uh, you know, disappointed, frustrated. We, you know, we said take, you know, take it out on on the, whoever we're going to play, but you know, and maybe just figuring it out slowly but surely. But you know, we'll see Saturday. We just got to keep making progress. Um, you know, the older guys have to be consistent and, and efficient. And, you know, I thought Xavier got us off to a great start, obviously made some shots, but, you know, sharing the basketball. Uh, Cardi, you know, he's just – he's got to take pride. And he, he, 10 assists, it's big time. He's one of the best in the country. Um, you know, continue that and, and doing it at a high clip because when he drives, he can create for a lot of people. And so, you know, if those guys are efficient, we got to get Matt going a little more. Uh, we need him. He's got to – he can't be floating around, but if they're, those three are consistent, but the big thing with them is they got to demand that what, why we've won, and they've been part of it, they've been a major part of it, why we've won's got to stay there. And that's, I thought our first couple of possessions defensively were big time. Uh, you know, just like a clinic, we all the things we teach, uh, our defensive pride has got to be there every day. Our, uh, we got to play hard. You know, we played hard against Marquette, but they played harder, and that's why they beat us. You know, it helps them. You know, they made some shots, but they played their butts off in our place. And and then, uh, you know, the, the toughness when you get in a game like coming up Marquette game or coming up against Mississippi State and you get those gut check times, we got to have toughness. And that it's on both ends of the court. It's executing on the offensive end and it's, it's doing all the little things on the defensive end to get stops and find ways to win the game. So those are why we've won. Long with sharing the basketball, and it's got to, they got to make sure that continues to happen if we're going to move forward. And can you give us a lowdown on why Sean Williams left the team? Sean is, uh, you know, I, I, I'm disappointed, you know, and, and Xavier's here, and he's been part of his life for a long time. And, uh, you know, when somebody doesn't make it uh, and leaves, it, you know, it, it's like a child for me. You know, you, you want everyone to be successful. Um, not everyone is today's today's uh, world of basketball guys. You know they they think it's always greener on the other side, and you know if they're going to be able to do this or that. I think the ironic thing is somebody sent me a uh, one of the NBA guys to, sent me a like a, a analysis of the drafts from I don't know how many years, the last nine years, whatever it was, and. Only 4% of guys that transferred were, ever, were a part of that draft list. Only 19 guys in, in that stretch. And some of those, those I, I, it, and I think that top guys were like somebody went to Kentucky and somebody went to uh, Duke or something like that. So it, I'm not sure. Uh, we had Scott Howard from the Denver Nuggets talk to our guys a couple years ago, and he said, why not transfer at the school you're at and get better? But that's not what kids uh, want to do. And, I feel bad. I, 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 you know, we had he had to go through the, you know, the suspension. I thought he was making some strides, but it wasn't uh, what he wanted, and so we got to move forward. That gives David David Sloan. I thought he did a great job. Give him more opportunity. Days one, um, and just wish him the best down the road. Xavier, how, how impressed are you? And you know, the first half obviously very good, but the fact that you guys came out with such a big lead and didn't just you know take it easy, give in. You kind of came out with with the same aggressiveness in that second half. Uh, we just wanted to come out there and show what we are about. You know, we had a uh, last couple stretch, last three to four games, so we had to get back on the uh, winning way, winning way, and do the things the right way. So if you go uh, eight of ten from the field tonight, were you just feeling it, or were there shots open, or I guess how would you, would you kind of evaluate the way you shot the ball tonight? Uh, my guys did a great job of finding me in spots. Uh, had a couple open ones. Uh, the basket looks pretty big when you get a couple uh, good ones to go down. So it was just a good night shooting. Uh, you got thirteen apiece from both Dejuan and Antonio tonight. Just thoughts on their effort in general as well as their scoring. Yeah. Um, you know, they've been good. They, you know, I talked the other night, they 12 on the play hard and against Marquette in a, you know, pretty big game as freshmen. Their first really big one with energy, national TV, all that stuff. They play their butts off. They don't always play perfect. They make mistakes. But, uh, 
you know, they're, they're starting to figure it out. I thought, that, to me, the best play for Dejuan was his, his drop-down pass. That's the best pass he's made since he's been here to, you know, to some – I think it was Pearson for a layup. Uh, that's the stuff. You know, he's, he's got to continue to get better. I thought Antonio made a big-time pass to Mac for a dunk. You know, those – you got to do more than just, you know, score the basketball. You got to be able to execute and help teammates and – but both of them very good, 13 and eight for Antonio, close to a double double. That's that's really positive, um, you know. And and then Dejuan make the, you know, he finally made a dunk, but it, the tip dunk make that thing, and you really have a a special night. Uh, he still turns it over a little too much, but he plays his butt off, and he's getting a, you know, he's learning, figuring it out, and and they both been pretty coachable. You anticipate having Montavious back for Saturday? We're going to practice. He practiced a little bit. I told you that today. And, uh, you know, I, the only thing is we just can't push it. And I got to trust the medical staff. And I think the, the probably one of the tough parts, and Dave Xavier and I talked about James Love actually got back in practice two days, and all of a sudden his foot hurt again. Nigel got back in practice one day, or, and, and then all of a sudden he, his knee hurt, and he has a similar injury to Montavious. So we, we just got to be smart and take our time with him. I, he says he has no pain and just every day progress and see if, if we can, you know, you know, if you have to, maybe you use him a little bit on Saturday. Xavier, we hear so often like when things come easy for guys, this is the things that maybe they didn't do right is what sticks with them. So for you, is like what you're, you're, it's going to stick with you is just the two the two missed free throws tonight? Uh, definitely, you know. Uh, we've been working on free throws a lot, and I can't miss two in a row. Good uh, shooters never miss two in a row. So that's just some get back on the free throw line, get back in the gym, <laughs> make shots. I'm not going to try to give you an excuse here, but I mean that was right after you got kind of really shaken up. Would, did that at all affect you on the shots? No, nah, I should have should have made the free throw still. Uh, for both Xavier and Antonio, what's it like when David is in the game at point guard, getting the ball around to everybody? Is that different from when Sean and Cardi have been in games? Uh, we know David likes to attack. You know he likes to pass the ball as well too. So uh, he likes to. He he's still getting into the flow, still getting into the team chemistry as well, uh, finding finding where guys like the ball at. But I think he's doing a great job of just uh, pushing the pace, getting the ball down the court. And I feel like he's doing just doing a great job of that and being a leader uh, on the court. Yeah, same thing. I feel like David sees the floor well. He sees us. He makes the passes that we want. Uh, he knows how to run a run a fast break, so I feel like he helps us a lot. Bruce, can you expand on that a little bit too, and maybe how you'll challenge him, what you want out of him now that he's playing more? Now, you know, with Sean gone, that you know, now it, he doesn't. Maybe this will help him a little bit. He can relax. He knows he's going in. Uh, you know, it, it's a, it's a big jump. I why just asked on the post game, and you know, I. I Kind of compared to Montavious. Montavious' first two weeks practice, I, I told the coach he's got a red shirt. He's horrible, you know. And then two weeks later, three weeks later, he's starting and he's one of our most consistent guys. And you got to go through that growing, growing, you know, un, like he said, figuring it out, figuring out the team. And I think David's had to go through that. He he had a couple really bad weeks of practice. I mean, he was just awful. And I, you know, I the only thing I'd like him to do, I told him the other day, he talked in practice. First time I've heard him talk since he's been here and he, you know, loud enough for everyone could hear him, you know, and, and if he, he, you know, he does push it, he can create, he sees the court, thought he was too unselfish. He had a wide open three in the second half, should have shot it. It's a pretty good three point shooter. You know, you look at him, Cardi 10, two assists, turnovers, Mike McGurl, six, one, and David four, one. So they're, you know, between the three guys, it's 20 to four. And, uh, one of the things we've struggled with is playmaking for each other, and it's something I've talked about and, and we've watched film on, and, and if we can continue to do that, you know, I think it's going to help our shooting percentage. There's no doubt. Uh, do you know what Mississippi State brings, what you should be looking out for this weekend? Well, I coach Reggie, pa Reggie Perry was MVP of the World Championship, so, um, you know, he strong, physical, put his name in for the draft. I got to give him credit. He, he, you know, he almost stayed in, and then he, he was the one who reached out to USA Basketball and said he wanted to be part of it. Um, so he's, he's a very good physical presence. Uh, they have another big, big guy inside, so they got two pretty strong guys. It means Levi Mack and Antonio have a challenge uh, with that. That's why we're kind of hoping James Love would, you know, would maybe be back. And, you know, maybe he can push it a little bit. Um, you know, and then uh, the guard Carter's is good. 
Um, and then they have a good freshman guard, the kid uh, Molinar, I think the kid from uh, California who we watched coming up. He played in Peach Jam and is a pretty good player. So um, Ben does a great job. I've known him forever. Uh, obviously, you know, his run at Pittsburgh, UCLA. Every he, My brother was assistant with him a long time ago. So uh, it's, it's a great opportunity for us, great venue, uh, special game, never forget game, 9-11. Have a chance to see New York on Friday afternoon and Saturday after the game. But main thing is go get a win. And it, it's, you know, I think somebody asked the other day, you, you know, opportunities are slipping away. Well, this is a great opportunity for us in non-conference and help us to take a step forward. Coach, 63% uh, from the field. How much of that is just things going right on offense versus just making shots? Well, I think moving the basketball helps. Good shots. The ball likes movement. I've told the guys that, and they'd laugh at me probably. It wants to be touched. It likes to move. When it gets energy, it seems to go in. Um, you know, it, it, and, you know, and, and I, hopefully they were ready to play. They, you know, I mentioned the first thing that, you know, disappointed, humbled, whatever you want to call it, came a lot better focused, um, you know, but they now tomorrow's important. It's not going to be hard, but their focus has to be great. And that's up to those older guys to make sure that we're taking a step forward and don't go backwards. Uh, Bruce, this is for you. I know after uh, you guys came back from the Florida tournament and had the, the two losses, and, and I asked you after the Florida A&M game, just how much do you think the team needed that kind of win? Do you feel like the same now to kind of see how oh, – yeah. yeah. Not only winning, but playing better. That's what I told them before. we got to play better. You know, that, it's habits. Basketball's a game of habits. And, and, you know, we have to cre create better habits as individuals, as a team. Um, and, you know – you have to, you know, do the things we do and do them well. And, you know, I think we're starting to figure out some roles. And, and that, you know, that hopefully will help us um, take pride in those roles. And, you know, this, you know, I, think, I hope they feel good about it, but they can't get too high. Now, you know, that's what I just said. The focus tomorrow has got to be Mississippi State. I talked to the coaches today. You know, I didn't want to look ahead, but. You know, how are we – we got to get ready. We have a short window. They've had – they haven't had a uh, game for, I think it's eight days. So, they're – you know, they've had much more preparation for us than we would have for them. And uh, it's important to go there with a little bit of a chip on our shoulder. We get – this is huge for us. It's uh, not pressure-wise, but just being ready to play. And Xavier, earlier, I mean, Bruce touched on just how – how long you've known Sean. Just how, how tough was the news for you today when, when you heard – what he's going to do? Uh, it's definitely tough, you know, uh, growing up with him, uh, being around him as a little kid. Uh, it's tough, but he has to make his own decisions now, uh, become a man for himself. And I think he's going to do a good job of that and, and wherever he decides to go. Did, did you at all try to try to maybe uh, explain to him, maybe stay in here while that would be good? Or did you say, well, man, you got to make your own choice? Uh, he, like I say, he's a man, got to make his own decisions. Of course, I wanted to see my brother stay, but he, like at the end of the day, he's a man. Coach, with Sean leaving, does that change or add anything on the recruiting trail for you guys? Um, you know, it, it, right now, I guess it gives, it gives us another spot. But, you know, you you still have, you know, you recruited pretty much a team coming this next group. Um, you've hopefully you have, you know, my big thing was how we're going to replace Xavier and Mac. So kind of, I think we got to, you know, we're still really feeling important to get a big guy. You hope Dejuan makes progress. Selton is a really good player. Between the two, you hope you can replace Xavier. Um, you got David, you got Nigel as, as point guards with Cardi. Um, you know, Mike McGurl is taking some steps. So, you know, I think the big need still is, is just a little more help on that with those big guys. And that's what, uh, that's what we've been searching for. And, Obviously, things can continue to change college basketball and how it is, but uh, that's our main focus right now. And it's been since even November. We we knew that, and um, we'll see next week. We got a little time after the game. We got exam week. You know, won't have as many two days off practice, so we can get out recruiting and see some more kids. Antonio, where did the uh blowing a kiss celebration come from with the threes? Uh, one day in the summer, I was just shooting around, messing around with Cardi, and I like just came up with it. So ever since then, he was like, yeah, that's tough. You got to do it in the game. So first exhibition versus employee, I started doing it. Been doing it ever since. Stick, stick it out the rest of the year? 
Yeah, for sure. Has anybody in the student section like blown a kid's back in? Yeah, there's been a few. I've gotten a few videos after the game to my phone <laughs> and I'm doing it, so. Um, what was your reaction to winning Coach of the Year? Uh, it, you know, one, it was a, just a special honor to coach USA basketball, and, and it's something, you know, you have a, a wish list, a goal, or, you know, a kind of a dream to have that opportunity. I had been involved as a committee member, as a court coach, out at trials and things like that, but to have that opportunity, uh, we had a great Great staff. Uh, those guys, lifetime memory or friendships with Coach Hopkins and Coach Moulton. And uh, uh, and then Shane did a great job for us, Southwell. Uh, we had a great team. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I'm proud. I'm proud of what we did. We did it convincingly. Um, you know, you look at the stats. I don't have to brag about it. We did it pretty, you know, we did it pretty, we did our job pretty well. And uh, just, just, it's a nice honor. And, but I'm more worried about, uh, winning against Mississippi State than that. That, you know, that it's something, you know, that I'm proud of. But at the same time, I'm, I want these guys to be successful. And, and that's more important to me right now. Antonio, how much does your ability to shoot uh, I just want to be able to play all around. Uh, I think it helps a lot, the team that I can space the floor, but at the end of the day, I just want to play hard and win, so.